On the 18th of April, 1942, during the famous Doolittle Raid on Tokyo, U.S. Army Air Force Captain C. Ross Greening spotted an unusual and unexpected enemy aircraft, a Messerschmitt BF-109. As it turned out, Greening was wrong. It was instead the Kawasaki Ki-61, the only mass-produced Japanese fighter of the war to use a liquid-cooled inverted V engine. Designed by Takeo Doi and his deputy Shinowada, the Kawasaki Ki-61 was codenamed Tony by the Allies due to its similarity to an Italian Maki C-202. But the Ki-61's design was influenced by Kawasaki's previous experience with licensed production of the German Daimler-Benz DB601 engine, which the Japanese licensed version was the Kawasaki HA-40. The Ki-61 featured a sleek, all-metal monocoque design, a departure from the prevailing Japanese preference for light, fabric-covered aircraft. This design decision, along with the inclusion of self-sealing fuel tanks and an armoured windshield, resulted in a much more robust and structurally sound aircraft than the cloth-covered light aircraft typically used by the Japanese. It was designated the Hien translated as the Flying Swallow by the Imperial Japanese Army Air Service, who wanted to acquire a high-performance fighter aircraft, which could effectively challenge Allied fighters like the P-40 Warhawk and P-38 Lightning. With a maximum speed of 360 miles per hour, a range of 360 miles, a service ceiling out at 38,100 feet, and an impressive climb rate of nearly 3,000 feet per minute. The Ki-61's performance eliminated the dive and escape tactic Allied pilots had used on lighter Japanese fighters. But unfortunately, the Ki-61 was the last of the fighters powered by the DB-601 engine types, and it was soon overshadowed by fighters with more powerful engines. By the time it first flew in December 1941, the engine was already underpowered compared to the new 1500 inline or 2000 horsepower radial engines being developed for the next generation of combat aircraft, such as the Republic P-47 Thunderbolt. Moreover, the inline HA-40 engine proved to be an unreliable power plant, exacerbated in the South Pacific campaign where high temperatures caused problems with the fuel pumps. Its armament typically consisted of two synchronized 12.7 mm H0103 machine guns mounted in the forward fuselage, complemented by either two wing-mounted 20 mm H5 cannons or two 12.7 mm machine guns. The HO was a light weapon for its caliber and fired a light shell, but this was compensated for by its rapid rate of fire, but the ammunition capacity was limited, having only around 250 rounds for each weapon. By now, some might have noticed many historical pictures of the key 61s have the decals of a 12-ray sun. This is the emblem of the national government of the Republic of China, who often rebadged and utilized captured Japanese aircraft. Although a prototype was used to intercept the Doolittle bombers, it only entered combat for the first time in early 1943, during the New Guinea campaign. Even then, it was rushed. The Ki-61's liquid-cooled engines suffered a disastrous series of failures and ongoing problems, which resulted in the obsolescent Ki-43 still forming the bulk of the Japanese Army Air Force's fighter capability. Like the ME-109, the Ki-61's, finicky Ha-40 engine could not be overhauled in the theater. Instead, they had to be shipped to the nearest service depot in Halmahera, in eastern Indonesia. Even so, they did make an impact. General George Kenny, the Allied Air Force's commander in the southwest Pacific, found his Curtis P-40s completely outclassed. 
However, Kenny exploited the numerical strength of Allied bomber units, along with inadequate Japanese anti-aircraft systems. Bombing raids imposed crippling losses on Japanese units. Approximately 174 out of 200 Japanese aircraft based in the Wewak area were lost when caught in the ground in August 1943. By the end of the New Guinea campaign, nearly 2,000 Japanese aircraft had been lost in air attacks from up to 200 Allied aircraft at a time, around half of which were consolidated B-24 Liberators and North American B-25 Mitchells. The Ki-61 was also utilized in Southeast Asia, Okinawa, China, and as an interceptor during U.S. bombing raids over the Japanese home islands, including against Boeing B-29 superfortresses. In late August 1944, when B-29s from Chinese airfields attempted to bomb the steel factories at Yawata on mainland Japan. Sergeant Shigeo Nobeo intentionally flew his Ki-45 into a B-29. The result was immediate. Not only was the target B-29 destroyed, but debris from the explosion severely damaged another B-29, which also went down. The tactic was so effective that on the 7th of November 1944, the officer commanding the 10th Air Division made ramming attacks a matter of policy by forming ramming attack flights called Hagakure Tai, specifically to oppose the B-29s at high altitude. The aircraft were stripped of their fuselage armament and armor in order to attain the required altitudes. Note. The term kamikaze is often used to refer to the pilots undertaking these attacks, but that term was not used by the Japanese military. Indeed, there were several instances of Japanese pilots surviving such attacks, either landing heavily damaged aircraft or bailing out. But despite survival, these pilots gained no reprieve and were obliged to continue these deadly and dangerous ramming tactics until they were killed or wounded so badly that they could no longer fly. They were regarded as doomed men, and were celebrated among the ranks of those who were going to certain death as Tokotai. Most of the 89 known recipients of the Bukosho, Japan's equivalent to the Victoria Cross or Medal of Honor, were Tokotai who scored against B-29s. Remarkably, Sergeant Masao Itagaki survived two ramming attack on B-29s. He survived the war as only one of two known double Bukosho recipients. In total, approximately 3,000 Ki 61s were produced in various models and configurations. The aircraft remained in service until the end of the war, with some examples continuing to serve in the post war Japanese self defense forces. Despite its mixed operational record, the Kawasaki Ki-61 stands as a testament to Japanese engineering innovation and adaptation during World War II. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please like and comment below. And if you would like more like it, please subscribe and hit the notify button.